Are you so inflexible that you can't even stretch yet? You'll see why that's important in a second. Hi guys, Tom Morrison here, and today I want to give you a few concepts that are really going to help get you started in your flexibility journey. One of the things that really used to bother me whenever I start, first started off, I wasn't flexible at all, and everything I looked at from movement gurus and anyone who was teaching flexibility stuff, like already required you to be flexible, like I had no hope of even trying any of the stuff, so I had to break things down a lot, and that's the stuff today that I want to give to you guys. One of the very first things that's recommended to you is to just sit in the squat. If you're not flexible, sit in the squat and your squat will get better. Doesn't really help if you can't sit in the squat. So say your squat looked like this and your back was all rounded, your knees was caved in, your ankles were caving in and you're just trying to sit there like this. It's just not comfortable. You're not gonna spend very long doing it and it's kind of dangerous as well. So yes, it's great for Jenny. Jenny can sit in her squat. She can grab her ankles. She can rotate up the sky. Jenny can do a ton of stuff here. She can even move the knees around. She can get comfortable in this position. Jenny is flexible. If you're not flexible yet, then you need to get a bit of assistance on the go. So where do we start? Get a hold of something to hold on to. So we're gonna use a rig post because we're in the gym, but this is just as easy to do with a door frame, okay? So what you're gonna do here is take out that element of balance. So you're gonna hold yourself up with the use of your arms, and this is what's gonna help you to sit down lower into your squat. Now, if you've just started, you may find you're a little bit higher, and this is where you can start to work. So I want you to move around while you're down here. Don't just sit and just wait for something to happen. Move around, use the muscles a little bit as you go, and then then you're going to be able to start driving the knee more over the toe. If you need to rock up onto the ball of foot and then put the heel back down again, that's absolutely fine. Play around with this, make it feel comfortable, and you'll really start to open up your quads. You're going to move the hamstrings, you're going to open up the knees, you're going to work on your ankles. This is going to be a big movement that's going to help you to do a lot of stuff. If you're not able to sit into a squat quite yet, you're not ready for like individual hamstring stretches and just really, really like pinpointed focus stuff just yet. This is where you want to start. Get the big gross movements first and this will set you up for more success in the future, okay? So even if you can let go of one hand, you can still do that same rotation thing that Jenny was doing on assisted before as well. So you can start to open up the upper back while you're down there. But this is the thing that you'll be able to spend more time in. So try and do this first thing in the morning, a wee bit throughout the day as well, just for a couple of minutes, and then the last thing at night too. And the more often that you do it, the faster you're gonna notice progress, and then you can actually start to see, can you start to let go every now and again, and see, can you keep your balance? Even if you start to feel you're falling back a little bit, just keep your hands near whatever you're holding on to and this is going to help you to build up more confidence with your squat until one day you're able to let go completely and just stay there okay next up we've got touching our toes with straight legs this is one that's commonly used as a test for flexibility and if we turn to the side we can in fact see that Jenny's legs are completely straight but if you're not that flexible your toes are quite far away from you so say you look like this Rather than getting you down to the floor and doing really specific hamstring stretches and folding ourselves in half so we could maybe fit into a suitcase, we don't really want to start working on that just yet if we're not at that point, okay? It'll just be uncomfortable and you'll just not feel like you're getting anywhere. What we're going to do is cheat. So if Jenny folds herself over with her legs bent, she'll find a point that she's actually able to get the hang of the toes. Now, if she pretends that she's not flexible, she can then slowly start to straighten out the knees a little bit until she's feeling a bit of a stretch in the back of the legs, okay? So you're gonna be hitting your lower back here, you're gonna be hitting your hamstrings, and you're gonna be hitting your calves as well, okay? So there's multiple benefits to doing this like this. So if you do this for 10 reps, if you start to feel dizzy, come up, take a break, have a cup of tea, and then go back down. So do this for about three sets, okay? So 10 reps and do three sets of this. And then if you come back up and start from the top again, try with your legs straight again and see if you have an improvement. Now for many people, I've seen people reach their toes in one session from doing this. But even if you're getting, say, started at the knee and then you're halfway down the shin after doing this for a few sets, that's your improvement. That is your flexibility goal. So rather than trying to get really complicated with stretching specific muscles, you can actually think, right, I want to get to my toes and the most efficient way to get to your toes is to use a movement that looks like the movement that you're trying to improve. Okay guys? The number one takeaway from this video is not to become so focused on where other people are at and try and understand where your own flexibility is at your own level.
Yes, some stretches may be off the cards for you at the moment, but the more that you work on these things and get the big gross movements first of all, then you're going to be able to start to tweak things a little bit more and you're going to have a lot more things on the table to start playing with whenever you've got all of this foundation down. Always remember that fitness and strength can come and go, but your body awareness and your mobility can always get better, and that's the stuff that's gonna help you in the long run perform well and feel good forever. As always, thank you guys for watching. Leave any comments or anything you'd like to see from us in the future, and if you want to get started on your mobility journey, then head over to my website, tommorrison.uk, and pick up the Simplistic Mobility Method.